Hi guys, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So I'm continuing my series of the worst performing tanks, according to Blitzstars. And we're now onto the mediums. And apparently, according to Blitzstars, this is the worst performing medium at tier 8. The British Centurion 1. Now, apparently, it's had 399 battles and only a 45% win rate. It has a damage per battle of only 946, and its survival is just marginally better than that of its counterpart that's coming up behind it, the Panther II. Why is that? I mean, is the Centurion Mark I really that bad? Is it truly that terrible? I mean, okay, there are some pretty decent mediums in Tier 8. And yeah, okay, there are some pretty decent premium tanks, because Tier 8's always been a premium tank fest. However, this one having a 45% win rate, clearly to me, says that there's something wrong with either A, of the tank, or B, how the tank is being played. Now the thing is, I actually like the Centurion Mark I, and I don't think it's a truly terrible tank. In fact, I think quite the opposite. I actually like this tank. Um, I, I, I like rolling out of it. I think it's a nice little medium. But the thing about this tank is that it's a very bizarre tank. And the reason it's bizarre is because whilst it may look lean and hungry like a heavy, it's it's nothing like a heavy and for a medium it's got some strange quirks and we'll get into those so we're jumping in now to have a look at the actual parameters of the tank and you can see straight away there's 1537 hit points armor wise well this thing hasn't really got a lot of armor on the turret frontally it's 175 millimeters that's pretty thin the sides of the turret and the rear are 112 it's the hull that really lets this tank down 76 millimeters on the front, 51 on the side, and only 38 on the rear. View range is not too bad for a medium, almost 300 meters. But don't forget, I'm running it with certain equipments. Concealment, again, is a medium that's not too bad. 45% when stationary, 40% while moving, and 11% after firing when stationary. DPM, well, it's a typical British tank. It's got really good DPM, 2,345, which is not shabby for a medium tank. Reload time is also very nice, just under 5 seconds at 4.86. Penetration, well, it's okay, 236 on its standard, 271 on the APCR, and 46 on the HE. Although the RU has 112 on the HE, it's crazy, eh? Damage, well, again, it's a British tank. And in order to get that really quick load time, and thus that DPM, you're going to sacrifice your damage. AP is only 190, APCR is 160, and HE is a very lovely 250. Aim time, very nice, 2.8 seconds. Dispersion, not too bad either, 0 0.303. Gun depression, going downwards that is, is only 10 degrees, which is okay, very manageable, and elevation is 18. Maneuverability, well, for a, heavy, for a medium, it's not too bad. 45 is your top speed going forwards, 20 going backwards, with an average speed of 35. And it's got pretty nice terrain crossing ability. So, considering all that, it's got pretty decent DPM, it's, you know, it's got a good load time, good aim time, etc., etc. Why has this tank only got a 45% win rate? Well, one of the major problems for that win rate is this the armor now the armor on this tank as i said when you look at it you think wow it's a pretty solid looking tank but don't be deceived because this armor is pretty thin again this is facing off against a tiger 2 and as you can see frontally it's pretty wide open to the standard ammunition of a tiger can it side scrape not really but at a push yes <laughs> but you, you know it, it's not the best okay now okay it's got 10 degrees of gun depression so if I drag the gun down to its 10 degrees and stick it on a ridge 
Well, you see that the turret becomes lovely, but the hull is still paper thin. I mean, you're still only knocking out there 137 millimeters because the hull is so thin to begin with. Now, these should be telling you something. When you look at a tank and you see that it's got pretty thin armor, when you look at a tank and you see it's got good gun depression, but really bad hull armor, and when you see a tank and it's got very good DPM at a fast reload time and it dishes out pretty, pretty poor damage, these should be alarm bells ringing in your head on how you should play this tank. This tank is a haul down tank, completely. Don't stick this on a ridge line. When you go haul down, that turret becomes a lot harder to pen and you'll start getting those bounces. It is a sniper. That's why the gun is so accurate. That's why it's got a fast reload and that's why it's got pretty good DPM. But not everybody plays it that way. What we're going to do now, we're going to jump into the equipment loadout I use to see, oh, are there any ways that we can improve the tank overall? So what I'm running on at the moment is calibrated shells. That's going to give me extra penetration. Okay, it's knocking me up to 236. I don't need a gun rammer. This tank has already got bloody good reload time. Why would I use a rammer? If I stick the rammer on, it's only gonna get, it's, it's, it's gonna increase my reload time to four and a half seconds. I've already got it below five seconds. An extra 3, 0.34 seconds off the reload time isn't gonna make an ounce of difference. DPM does go up, but again, remember what I say. DPM is what the tank is capable of doing, not what it will do. I'm gonna be facing off against tier nines. That's gonna happen, it's a tier eight tank. Tier 7s I ain't got a problem with. Tier 8s, some of those have got pretty stonking armor. I mean, you think of the big VKs and stuff like that. So I want that extra oomph, that extra penetration. I then stick it in with a defense system. Why? Because why not? I mean, I don't want the crew injured and I want, you know, the chance of ammo racks and everything to come down. No point me running a camo net, it's got pretty decent camo as it is, plus it's a medium, it needs to move around, plus it's pretty tall and pretty big. If I stick a camo net in, okay, it goes up to 55% while I'm stationary and 45 while moving and 13 while firing. But it doesn't make an ounce of difference to me. This thing should be second line, okay? Uh, so camo net is useless. Improved optics is what you need. It's a medium. You need to get that view range up and you need to start seeing those targets so you can smack them. This tank loves being sort of like a sniper type thing. Think of the Leo 1 um, over in tier 10 on the German lines of mediums. This is that kind of tank. I therefore use it with the enhanced gun laying device. Again, I want the aim time to come down. There's no point in me sticking in a supercharge. This tank doesn't have the velocity on its ammunition as it is. Sticking a supercharge in ain't really gonna help it. I then stick in the approved assembly. Why? Because the hull is so, so thin. If I stick that on, what's the point? I'm getting 4% of a very thin hull. There's no point. So I'd rather have the additional hit points knocking it up to that 1,537. I then use the engine accelerator because that gives me some better mobility. I've already got a very good turn rate. So there's no point in me putting in improved control. The control on this tank is good as it is. So I'm just gonna stick in the engine accelerator gives me a little bit more to play with. I'm then gonna use the vertical stab, gets the aim time down, it's a medium tank, I want the aim time down. No point in me putting in the refined gun, I don't need to lower the dispersion. Not really, this isn't a TD, this isn't a let's sit at the back of the map type of tank, so I'd rather have that vertical stab. I'm then just using a toolbox and I end consumables. Talking about the consumables, moving across then, standard loadout, two repair kits and adrenaline. Don't need the speed boost. I mean, it's got a pretty decent enough speed. The speed boost is not gonna do anything for me. It's gonna only increase it by 20% power to the engine. So why bother? Provision wise, well, I want the crew to be at its best. So I'm using the pudding in tea that makes all my view ranges, DPM and everything go upwards. I'm then using obviously the protective kit that allows me to do lots of bits and bobs and I'm using the improved fuel. Gives me some better uh, stats mobility wise, so that's why I'm using that. I mean, I could use just a cup of tea, but there's no point really. I've already got pretty sufficient crew skills when I have the pudding and tea. Ammunition, well, I'm rolling out with 35 AP, 
20 APCR and 10 HE. Why 10? Because this thing has got pretty decent HE penetration for one, and for two, it's got pretty nice HE damage. I mean, when I'm dishing out close to, it can knock out close to 313 at its I end alpha, I want this. It's as simple as that. So that's my loadout. So what's this tank like to play and what is its quirks and what is its problems? Well, as I showed you with the armor inspector, its biggest problem is that of the hull armor. It has also got a bit of a pew pew gun. Now when I go back into the stats of the tank on the tech tree, you can see I'm running it with the top gun at tier eight. There are two other guns at tier seven, but when you look at those, then you know your penetration comes down, everything comes down. So there's no point if you've got the top gun, load the top gun. Thing is, it's still a pew pew gun. It's still a British tank. To get that big DPM, you are going to be knocking out very, very small amounts of damage. But there are ways to play this tank very, very successfully. And we're going to have a look at three replays to see how that can be achieved. This is us rolling out on our little Centurion Mark I on Oasis Palms, a map that this tank really likes. And I'm tuned up again with my long-suffering and erstwhile tune mate, Ethelump, who's also in his Centurion Mark I. Unfortunately, we're looking at the mini-map and there's only the two of us here. If you look, most of my team are going in the opposite direction towards that, where that sea cap would be. And that presents a bit of a problem. Now, the thing about this tank is, as I said, it's a ridge monster. It's a ridge line player. It doesn't like being sat in the open. And I'm doing my very best here to use that 20 kilometers to get out of trouble. Problem is, we've got three tanks there, and I also know they've got TVs all over the place, um, because they've got two of them. So I'm doing my best to get away from here. I get a good bounce there from the Scepter because he's hitting the turret, and, the, and when you're on a sort of incline, you're going to narrow that angle down. Now I'm able to sort of be a little more protected of that hull, which is the thing. I mean, it's a terrible shot. There you go, just it is. Ethelump is trying to get out of dodge as well to try and work some magic around the other side. I'm going to try and give this scepter a lot of hard times. And that's what you can do in this tank. He gets a good shot into the into the tank there. But we are going to be able to rip him down to a one shot. Unfortunately, I then um, just fluff it. Good thing is I've got a Tiger P next to me, so we're okay there. We've already taken down the Eagle 7, so he's gone. We have got the Scepter there, and more worryingly, there's a Bat chapter -esque who is right there. So I'll get a shot into him, but he gets a big roll into me, sticking my nose out far too far. And that hull is just wide open. So again, we have to reevaluate our positioning here and back out of trouble. Our heavies are still over the other side of the map. I can see one of them's in spawn, along with a TD, so we haven't got much support. We have therefore got to work some magic somehow. I come round the corner, forgetting that the turn on this thing is a bloody nightmare. Finally get around the corner. Am I able to finish off that tank? I narrow the angle because I'm on a slope. He hits the turret. I bounce him for 400 and I take him out. We are by no means winning this game. We have got the upper hand, not going to lie, but we're not winning the game as of yet. Still got um, a heavy sat at the back of the map. The Tiger P, bless him, is how it is line, which is really good. I inadvertently bang into uh, Ephelump there. The Batchat Baresk is still causing me problems. I'm still trying to keep this hull down as much as possible. I've got hardly any hit points. I am a one-shot to virtually everything on this map now. They have still got three tanks, two TDs and the Batchat. The Batchat worries me. <clears throat> he may be on his long reload, but he still worries me. There's one of their TDs, the 152. And there's a Steyr out there somewhere because he'd he taken out Ephelump. So I'm, I'm slightly concerned about sticking my nose out over this ridge because why I'm, I'm a one-shot. So I'm going to try and use the, the spotting range, the view range, whatever you wish to call it, and the haul down capability of this tank to try and stay a little bit safe and to try and search out those tanks. The 152 hasn't moved. Still don't know where the Steyr is. He was in the middle because that's where he smacked Ephelump. Uh, can I get a shot in? No, I can't. Thankfully, it's three again. Oh, and there is the Steyr. He's come around the corner. 
Lou the HE and just a terrible shot. Gets his track. Let's try it again. Maybe second time's a chart. And there you go. 242 into the sty. He's now a one shot, allowing us to push down onto the SU. The SU is going to be well contained, however, by the Tiger P. And this game, which, to be honest with you, I thought was going to be a loss, ended up turning out to be pretty okay in the end. And it's a win, which is nice. Now, I admit, I'm not setting the world on fire. I bounced 935. I knocked out just shy of 2,000. And I did some assistance damage. And you can see that I only killed one tank. Did a bit of assistance damage. And that's about it. We only get a third class. But you're starting to see what the tank can do. And it's not the best credit maker, but we've earned some credits. Ephelump, well, he was top of the tree there, 2,207 damage knocked out, and he gets a second class, and I'm second in the damage list. So I'm quite happy with that game, and that's what you can do in the Centurion. But there are better games and better ways to play it, and we're now going to look at those. Now we're rolling out on Castilla, another map that this little Mark one loves. Now, if you look at the minimap, you'll see that my teammate is going in the opposite direction to me. What I said to him was, I would look at this ridge because they have got three heavies. He is going to dominate the castle area because he can. We can already see that they're already up there at the castle. Now, for a medium, this tank is very, very sluggish. It doesn't have that true medium speed. And a lot of people get caught out by this tank because they think it's more like a heavium. It's actually not like a heavium. A heavium is, a, is, is more like a medium that has got good armor and can be good in a brawl. This tank doesn't have good armor. It's not that good in a brawl against some of those bigger tanks because it doesn't have the armor or the mobility. Not really. So what is this tank in real terms? Is it a heavy? Is it a medium? Is it a light? Well, to be honest with you, it's a ridge line second line ambush sniper medium pure and simple do not try and brawl in this thing do not stick this thing on the front line you've got to work the ridges which is exactly what i'm doing here now look i'm i'm lucky i'm i've got a long suffering teammate in the form of ephelump who is a pro player and incredibly good and we, we, you know, we try to work the maps to get as many cross shots as possible. I appreciate you're not going to be able to do that in every single game you play, especially if you're not tuning. So, you know, when I say tuning up increases your chances, it does increase your chances significantly because you're able to play these type of strats where you're getting the enemy into those cross shots. Um, crossfire is the easiest way to whittle them down. We will, we, we've knocked out 1,200. Unfortunately, Ephelum's died because that T29 pushed on him. I'm being smacked. I'm hopefully going to try and get one in there. No, I don't. The T49 smacks me. So I'm trying to work this ridge, but they know where I am. And there's not much I can do about that. I've got to reevaluate my positioning. I can see that the majority of our tanks are spread out towards where that A cap would be. I put a track shot into the T29 just just to keep him down. I thankfully bounced the T49. That's more because the accuracy on the T49 isn't the best. So I got quite lucky there. And I'm still trying to work this ridge. Unbeknown to me until now is that there's a T54 lightweight. Why he is not trying to pummel me is beyond me because I'm just going to waste it. And I do. I'm now worried about the T29. He was pushing on me so I'm going to run away from the T29 and try and circle back to put some pressure on him. Now, I'm not worried about the T49 and whatever tank is over the other side. I'm now solely concerned with this T29. And he hasn't got the best mobility. I've got much better mobility. I've got better DPM, but he has got bigger damage than me. And I've got paper thin hull. So I've got to play this one carefully. And this is what you should be looking to do. I'm going to peek and shoot. Reload, drop the adrenaline, try and track him, peek and shoot. And again, peek and shoot. Maybe I can out DPM him here and I can get some good shots in. He's not going to push on me, so again, I need to get out of dodge. Again, I haven't got the most, the most speed in the tank, but I have got more speed than the T29. 
marginally, so I'm able to get away from him. I'm hoping to try and drag him around this corner. I'm resetting the camo, and then, with my hope that he was coming around the corner, I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to face off against him. I think I've now got enough hit points to do this. Okay, that's why I'm doing it. Unbeknown to me, the T29 has exactly the same mentality. Instead of chasing me round the corner, he also turns around and goes in the opposite direction. Wise move, little T29. You will see him pop up on the map in a moment. So, there he is. He's given up on me, <laughs> clearly, because now he's going to push out towards the middle area of the map and try and get on those, on, on those ramps. I'm going to try and put one into his back. Doesn't. It bounces. Load the HE. Not going to be able to pen him. So, stick another one into his engine deck. Hopefully I can track him. Try to. No, don't get the track. But I've got the mobility. He's got the slow turret turn. I can take him down. And there we go. We do just shy of 3k. We bounce 870. And we take 3 kills. That is what this tank is capable of doing. And it really is capable of doing games like that. And this is why I'm confused. Let me get a second class, as I said. This is why I'm confused about this tank's win rate. This tank is actually a beautiful tank, but you've got to play it correctly. If you don't play it correctly, then yeah, you're gonna struggle. And boy, you will struggle. So remember, it's got a weak hull. As I said in the previous video, play to the tank's weaknesses. This tank's got a weak hull. Don't expose your hull. Your hit points are, for all intents and purposes, another part of your consumables or whatever they are there to be used but don't use them all at the beginning you know it's all great it's lovely finishing the game of all your hit points but what's the point of having all your hit points at the end of the game if you lose you know but don't give all your hit points away at the beginning of the game work the ridges with this tank remember it's a haul down tank play it haul down don't be in a rush to get into that front line. Don't be in a rush to overly expose yourselves. As I said with the RU251 video, you need to bide your time. And patience is a virtue. Once you've bided your time, once the opportunity presents itself, then you rush, then you push. Anyway, let's have a look at the last game because that game is even more interesting and highlights what this tank really can do. This is us jumping into Port Bay. Now, if you look at the lineup, we've got three heavies, two mediums, and two TDs. There's no lights. So I've one of us, either me or Ephelump, and Ephelump is going to hold the ridge on the corner overlooking the sea cap, and I'm going to go where lights and medium tanks realistically should go on this map. And for those of you who don't believe that this is a good position, this game will highlight why it's a good position. Especially when you have a tank like this. As I keep saying, this is a ridge line fighter. This tank loves being hauled down. This tank has got good gun depression. And it does actually have some pretty decent tourist armor. Contrary to popular belief, it also has a very accurate gun. So, okay, I'm not showing you how accurate it is there. But that's a really difficult shot onto that VK. That's a much easier shot onto the VK. Now, Ephelump is over on the side, and he's kind of holding them at bay with his all-down capability, and I'm getting the cross shots in. And this is why this position on this map for a tank like this is vitally important. I see so many players not going to this area when they should, be it in a light tank or a medium tank, or even a, you know, a, a really good all-down tank. Heifer's done some great stuff over there. I'm now going to help him out, turn my attention, and smack the top of this T2020. This is why you should be here, guys. You know, the cross shots are just like... This is a farm fest. But this is highlighting how you can play this tank and what this tank is really, really capable of. You can see it doesn't really struggle to pen some of these tanks. Okay, the damage is low, but the DPM and the reload time is beautiful. And this is what you should be looking at doing. We've lost two tanks. They've lost two tanks. This game is by no means certain. It could go either way. But I feel with me in this position and Ephelump in his position, we have got map control. 
Okay, they're in, the enemy team on, 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 on that side are in a bowl, and the Ho Ri on this side is in trouble. There's not much he can do. And this is just us farming now. Just whittling them down and whittling them down. And the enemy have got nowhere to go. They can't really pull back, because if they pull back, I will shoot them. And they can't really go forward, because Ephilim's there. The Ho Ri goes down. Now the game has changed completely. And we had total map domination in that game. And as you can see, we are playing the ridges. We are not rushing in. We are not trying to brawl. We're just playing this ridge line and we're just slowly, slowly whittling them down. We do, what, 2.6k damage. We only take one kill. But, but, the thing to remember about this tank is, and as I say to everybody, it's not always about the big damages, it's not always about the ace masteries, it's not all about the getting the Rosani medal, you know, your seven kills. It's about winning games. And once you know the maps and once you know the tanks, winning games becomes slightly easier. Okay, you've still got to make sure you've got a good team. And I'm quite lucky, as I say, I keep, I, you know, I'm rolling out with my uh, long suffering teammate. However, it wasn't that long suffering because whilst I got a second class with 2.6k, Effa knocks out a whopping 4,061 damage there, and uh, he gets a mastery, which is fantastic stuff. And that is what this tank is capable of doing in the right positions, and played in the way and in the manner that it should be played. And the problem why this tank has a 45% win rate, and why it has so low damage per battle according to Blitzstars, is because Unfortunately, the player base is not playing this tank correctly. It's actually a very, very nice tank. It's not as bad as people think. But if you don't play it correctly, if you play it badly, it is an absolute nightmare to play because you stick this thing in the wrong place, every man and his dog is going to smack your lower hull and there's nothing you can do about it. There's no way you can realistically return fire because it just doesn't have the alpha damage, to be honest with you. Anyway, everybody, I've been Fujit. That has been the Centurion Mark I. Allegedly the worst performing tier eight medium in the game. Personally, I like the tank. As I said, I don't think it's that traumatic. And if you're grinding your way along to that FV4202, you're gonna have to play this tank. And if you're playing this tank badly, then unfortunately you're gonna play the FV4002, the, the FV4202 equally as badly. So you have to remember that. Now the thing is, like I said, I actually like this tank. I think this is one of the better tanks, medium tanks in tier eight. It's just a tricky tank to play. And it's tricky because of that lack of armor and the lack of alpha damage. The thing is, it, you know, once you get used to the tank, once you understand its play style, it's actually a beautiful tank. And as I keep saying in every video, in, you know, to get the best out of these tanks, you need to know the maps. When you know the maps, you know where you can put the tank. You know the positions that the tank is gonna excel in you know which positions to exploit the parameters and the strengths of this tank, whilst making sure that the weaknesses are completely and utterly reduced. This, as I keep saying, is a ridge line fighter. It's got no lower armor. You've got to therefore make sure that you cover that hull as much as possible. This having a 45% win rate and being the worst performing tank in tier 8 is actually an injustice to this tank. This is a really good tank. It's a great tank. And if you can play it correctly, you can have oodles of fun in it. Because it really is a lovely tank. Anyway, I hope that video has been useful. Um, you know, not many people are going to like this tank. Not many people are going to like playing the Centurion Mark 1. A lot of people are going to say, no, it's still a pretty weak tank. And that's up to them. That's their opinion. That's their view. I like the tank. I think the tank is beautiful and lovely. But that's just me. Thing is, that's why on YouTube we have a comment section for you to comment. Tell us what your thoughts are. Tell us what you think about the Centurion Mark 1. Is it a good tank? Is it a bad tank? Do you like it? Do you loathe it? 
What are your views? I mean, I'm just telling you my views. My views aren't necessarily the right views. They're just personal to me and what I think about the tank. You may think something differently. I like this tank. And I think this tank is certainly better than the 45% win rate that is currently being looked at on Blitzstars. Anyway, as I said, I've been Fujit. That's been the Centurion Mark 1. By all means, comment and everything below. And until the next time, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because, guys, that is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.